All right, welcome to the show. I've got uh, Ian Martin with me. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for taking the time to come on. I really appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Thank you for having me. Let's uh, before we jump into what you do and uh, and whatnot. Let's uh, let's talk about. Are you playing anything right now? You got any games in the that you've been working through? Yeah, I'm 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 trying to catch up now. I just did ship my game Platfinity, and uh, so I worked on that for about two years, and uh, basically I've been putting off playing anything. Uh, just because I've been working on that pretty much all of my free time. So uh, I just finally got a chance to play uh, Max Payne 3 last night, and I stayed up a bit too late playing that. Um, but <laughs> I, I've got a whole bunch. Of, I kept telling myself, when you ship the game, you can play Skyrim. When you ship the game, you can play Skyrim. So, um, okay. but, <laughs> yeah, um, I've also got uh, Stanley Parable on there. I got that, I think, last week, and... Uh, I'm wanting to get to that eventually, but I got a, a huge backlog. If I look at my uh, desktop up here, I've got probably I don't know 15 things I haven't even haven't even played yet. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big backlog. Well, that's good, man. You've been creating, so I mean, it's good. You got to take that time to, you know, you you can't always be consuming if you want to be creating something. So it's 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 good. What uh, where did it start, man? What was the what where where'd you start with games? Um, well, I I started in the arcades when I was really little, um, three four years old, something like that. Um, back when the games were part mechanical and part, uh, you know, so they'd have like an actual helicopter on a stick that would move up and down, and a lot of more like the shooting gallery type games and stuff like that. And uh, when I when I first started going to the arcade. One half of the whole arcade was pinball machines, all along one side. So it was, just, you know, obviously giving away my age. But uh, and on the other side was, you know, a lot of them were the uh, electromechanical ones. And I think one of the first um, video game video games I ever played was uh, Space Wars. And I remember it vividly because it had uh, it had like typewriter keys <laughs> that you press to move the ships around, and it was kind of like a, a you know, computer space or whatever, but it was a version of that space war um, that a lot of people would put on mainframes and stuff like that way back when. And basically, I had like a little sun in the middle that was gravity, and then you had these little ships, and one kind of looked like Starship Enterprise, and then, uh, you know, another one was just kind of like the asteroid ship. But it basically played like asteroids, only you know, the two ships were shooting at each other. And uh, so that was, you know, and of course, uh, Space Invaders and Lunar Lander and all that stuff started to hit. But, uh, I pretty much grew up playing arcade games. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's very cool, man. Do you have a do you have a favorite game like that one that's uh, just your absolute favorite? My favorite is still Robotron 2084. That's still my absolute favorite game, uh, and I think probably because. Uh, because it still kicks my ass, you know, <laughs> and I still cannot, I'm still never, uh, never going to be the guy that turns it up to 10 and gets a million points. I think the best I ever did was like 330,000 or something like that, which to me is like, you know, a great achievement for, <laughs> what is that, maybe 10 minutes of playing or something, you know, not very long. <laughs> yeah, so. those those games aren't very forgiving, so that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, how about any any uh, any of the console games that you ever got into? Oh yeah, well um you know I went through uh, you know just like everybody else uh, when you know, Nintendo came out, I got into Nintendo and uh, I spent about two weeks straight playing Super Mario Brothers uh, just every day. That's all I did, and <laughs> so you know we'll go through the um, the NES era and then the, the the Super NES. First time I ever saw it at a friend's house. You know, I thought it was going to be cool, but then I saw it, and I, I was the next day. I was like, okay, I have to get one of these. This is the coolest thing ever. And uh, I think it was um, it wasn't Mario Kart. Was the other one uh, F Zero? I think yeah. he had on there, and it was uh, <laughs> you know, it was uh, the pseudo 3D mode seven thing, and I was just blown away by that. And of course, uh, you know, uh, I had a Genesis also, and uh, um, I've pretty much played all of them except for the latest uh, generation of them. I'm more of a 
of a retro gamer when it comes to the consoles. Now I mostly play on PC. So okay. I think the last one I, last one I bought was the Wii. So, <laughs> but as far as like the the you know the the PS4 and all that, or the Xbox don't have those. I see. All right. Well, cool, man. That's awesome. Let's uh, let's uh, let's hear about. You said you just released a game. What's it? What's it called? What's it about? And and let's kind of let's kind of break this down. Okay, it's uh, called Platfinity. It's uh, Platfinity, the platform game that you create while you play. And basically, what it is is it's uh, you're inside the game. Your character is walking around in there. And at any point that you want to, if if you grab the mouse and start moving the mouse around and click, you can actually change the game world and put tiles, uh, hazards, uh, moving hazards, platforms that move, um, all that stuff in there. And then you start moving the character again, and you're instantly playing the game. So it's not like you have to stop. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of games like that, you have to stop, and you kind of click recompile, and then you wait, and then your guy starts at the beginning up in the, you know, upper corner of the screen or whatever, and, and you start over. And with Platfinity, you never really have to do that because you're wherever wherever you move to. So um, you just basically, it's, it's really easy to use. You just right-click, and it opens up a toolbox, and in there you've got all your layers of tiles from uh, the background tiles. Uh, you can actually load a whole background, but then you've got background tiles, and those are behind your character. And then you've got the normal tiles, which is what I call normal tiles, and that's what the character walks around on. And then you have foreground tiles, and those, of course, go in front of them. So he's kind of sandwiched in, in the middle there. And you can also change the character if you want. You can change him into uh, anything you want. I actually uh, have there's four different characters in the demo stuff that I sent out with the game. So it's basically um, it's kind of like Minecraft in that you're you know in the game and at the same time you can change the game and create whatever you want. I see. So it's kind of a, I mean, it, it's, it's a 2D game, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's 2D. Um, if you've played any of the Platformance games, if you've played Platformance Temple Death or uh, uh, Platformance Castle Pain, it's very similar to that. It's uh, 2D, it focuses on the character and has a couple levels of zoom, so you, um, if you want to play zoomed in to get more of a traditional platformer type look, then you play zoomed in. But if you zoom out, you can see the entire play field. Um, and so it's kind of similar to if you played in the platformance games, it's kind of like that, but kind of cross with the pinball construction set. You never got to play around with that. So okay. essentially, you know, essentially you're grabbing. Um, you you uh, you have two kinds of things. You have tiles, which are obviously confined to the grid, and they have objects, which can be basically any graphic you want, and then you can grab that object and move it into the game world and place it, and then a bunch of properties come up and it'll say, okay, well, what do you want this object to do as far as, like, you want it to move diagonally, do you want it to move left and right, do you want it to move up and down, do you want it to swing back and forth like a pendulum? Um, you basically have full control over where you place things in the game and, and uh, what your game looks like because you can change the character into anything you want. I mean, you can make it into a bunny rabbit if you feel like it and have a bunny rabbit jumping around in there. So. Okay, so then are, like, are you... Is the user basically creating these levels and then and sharing them, or do you create them yeah. and save them and then run through them yourself, or how? What's that? What's how's this working? Well, a, a little of both. Um, it's really easy to share the level. Basically, the level consists of data that's just saved in a folder, and all you have to do to share that is just copy that whole folder. You copy that folder over and put it in someone else's Platfinity installation. They'll have a games folder too, and you just copy that over there. And then the next time you run Platfinity and you click load, it's right there in the menu. So, you know, let's say your game is called, you know, Bunny Rabbit or whatever, and you just copy all the data for Bunny Rabbit to the other person's computer, and then when they load Platfinity, one of the games up there is Bunny Rabbit, and you just click on that and load it, and uh, just loads right up. So um, the game saves everything automatically. When you're working on something, you quit. It saves every part of the game out to the disk, so it's very very user friendly. There's not really a, you know, you don't really. It's not one of those games where you're going to be working on something and oh, I forgot to save and you know, I lost my whole game or whatever. <laughs> so. 
I see. So is this the kind of thing where you could, like, I, I mean, I, I essentially could create my own, like, world and game based off of your game? Yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean, because um, included in the game, there's, uh, there's three demo levels, um, and they all demonstrate basically different graphical looks. I have one that's like a, a dark level that kind of looks like something like Limbo or Night Sky. Um, it has a colorful background, and everything in the foreground is a uh, silhouette. It's, it's a dark silhouette. So, like, the character is, uh, is blacked out, and uh, all the uh, enemies and things are, are blacked out, and the environment is blacked out. But the background is light, so you get kind of a look like something like Limbo, Limbo or, or Night Sky. And then um, I have another one that's called The Proving Grounds, which is basically Proving Grounds of the Mad Game Designer. And what that one is is just uh, a demonstration of uh, the kind of hardcore checkpoint-based platformer. So it plays something like uh, Super Meat Boy or um, the platforms games, if you've played any of those. And then there's a, another level in there where I use... Uh, the game has a feature called the, the Retro Filter, which when you're editing your graphics, you click the Retro Filter, and you basically get fat pixels. So if you go in there and you're drawing and you've got the retro filter on, it's got 2x and 4x, so if you've got it on 2x, you're going to get middle pixels. It's like 4 pixels instead of 1. And if you do, um, you know, uh, 4x, then you get these big fat pixels that, you know, and you can make something that, uh, one of the levels I did is uh, um, 8-bit love affair, and it basically has a, a character that looks a lot like an Atari uh, or a Commodore 64 era game. I see. That's uh, man. That's that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun. And this, where where can we find this? Where where is this on Steam or? Uh, it's trying to get on Steam right now. I have it on Steam Greenlight. Um, so if you just go to Steam Greenlight and you type in Platfinity, uh, P L A T I T Y, um, it's it's going to come right up on Steam Greenlight. Or you can go to uh, platfinity.com. And right now, uh, the only place it's available to buy so far is uh, itch.io. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting to, to, uh, to get it on to Sura, and, um, if that's how you even say that word. And, <laughs> and a couple other. I'm um, looking at uh, Indie Game Stand, and I think I've got it in uh, uh, sent it to good old games to see if they wanted to publish it. But uh, right now... Uh, if you go to platfinity.com, uh, I keep that updated with all the links to everywhere else, and of course I got a Facebook page and and all that for it. But uh, if you, uh, it's uh, the word uh, platfinity. Pretty much, if you type that into Google, everything you get is going to lead to the game. <laughs> so nice, nice. So how how did this come about, man? What? How long have you been making games, and what? Uh... You know, where'd the idea for uh, for Platfinity come from? Well, um, basically, I was I was working on uh, a, a space shooter, a shmup, um, around uh, between 2010 and 2012, and I didn't get a, a very good response to it as far as a lot of people saying they were interested in it. And so I went back to the drawing board and I kind of said, okay, um, you know, what could I make that everybody, you know, I, I, my goal was to make something that everybody that saw it would say, oh, cool, I want to play that. You know, I want to, I want to um, try that. So um, that's where the original idea um, for Platfinity came from. And basically, at that point, I was like, okay, how do I, how do I take it from, you know, what, what do I, what do I put in the game? And even more than what do I put in the game, what do I leave out of it? Or how do I streamline it so that, because basically, I wanted the users to be able to. I wanted anybody to be able to play it. Uh, at the time, my uh, little girl was four years old, and so I kind of used her as a test as far as how intuitive is the interface. Um, and so I, I just kind of thought about, you know, what is what does every platform game have in common, and what is the kind of platform games that that people really like? And we look at stuff like Super Meat Boy, where it's really hard, but you have infinite lives, and there's a, kind of a checkpoint system. And I thought, well, this is what, you know, I, I really want to build. And I looked at uh, a lot of the um, single-screen platformers where, you know, you zoom out and you can see the entire screen. But then if you zoom in, you can zoom in on your character. And uh, 
you know, I knew I wanted to build something like that, but I knew I wanted to make it easy enough that, you know, a five-year-old could play it and create something. And uh, I think I succeeded at that because uh, my six-year-old loves it, and, you know, and, and yet I think it, it, it goes from anywhere from there to, you know, 8 to 88, as they say. I don't know. Uh, I think anybody would... I think anybody would get a kick out of it because it's just uh, it, it is really that easy to use. I mean, you just uh, you just decide what kind of tile you want and you start drawing, and probably you have something in, in a few minutes. Where and then you you guys immediately jumping around on it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's. It sounds like such a cool idea, man. I'm excited to I'm excited to give it a give it a shot for sure. What uh, how is this the you said you were working on a shmup. What other stuff have you worked on? And like, when when did you get started making games? Um, well, I, I started actually when I was a kid. Um, I had really no idea that you could could make money or, or give them to anybody else. But <laughs> I started uh, in an Atari 8, 800 when I was a kid, and that's what I really started on. But uh, the first time I released a game to the public was uh, 1999. I put one out, uh, which is a DOS-based game which, of course, was the time when everyone was going to Windows, so that didn't go over very well. But, um, oh, no. <laughs> and then after that, I, uh, I went uh, out to California, and I worked at the 3DO company for a couple of years as a tester and then a level designer. And then the first uh, game that you might have heard of was uh, 2003, 2004. I put out a game called Reactor, which was basically a, a kind of like a version of Tetris in four directions, the easiest way to to describe it. Um, and then uh, I've done a couple, uh, over the years I've done a couple of uh, other games. I've done Ludendari, I guess that's how you say that, a couple times. Uh, I made a game called Amazing Adventures of Super Dolphin for uh, the Gamma 4 contest a few years back. It was a one button game contest. Um, and then, you know, like I said, I was working on uh, the Shmup, which was called Plethora 2012 Disclosure. And uh, um, that one, of course, I, I put out the demo for that in August, and then uh, didn't really get as good a response as I wanted. So I thought, okay, you know, you really have to concentrate on what your strengths are as as a, a developer. Which is why I started looking at something like Platfinity, where it's more of a of a, a programming challenge rather than a, a graphical thing like like a, a shmup is. So how about like schooling or training? Like what what are you are you self taught or did you go to school for game development? Yeah, I'm self taught. Um, basically, uh, I did I did go to college for about two semesters when I first went out to California. But uh, um, I'm pretty much self taught in all the programming and all that and the the other disciplines as far as the you know the art and the sound design and and everything like that. Um, I uh, basically learned it all from books. Um, I'm not really. A, <laughs> I kind of. I went. I went out to college, but when I did that, I kind of uh, already knew how to program in C and and C plus plus. Is my first game was in that. And uh, um, so I mean, I don't. I don't not recommend school for for everybody, but I think you know, depending on where you want to get in in the industry and what role you want to have, there's definitely different paths and. Uh, uh, basically, when I was out there, I kind of had a choice to make between keeping my job at 3DO and continuing with uh, the education because the schedules were conflicting. So I chose to go with 3DO, and um, then I, I basically got where I wanted to go there. So I think I made the right choice. But then, uh, of course, after a couple of years of that, I decided I wanted to uh, go India again, and uh, that's what I well. If, well, you probably know the story of 3DO going bankrupt and all that, so yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a <laughs> kind of an easy choice to make at that point. <laughs> sure, sure, man. So, did you? What did you use to create Platfinity? Uh, Platfinity is programmed entirely in Blitzmax, which is a programming language. Uh, it's not really an engine; uh, it's more of a, of a programming language, um, and it kind of exports to. Uh, DirectX or OpenGL graphics, so it's pretty flexible. Um, but I programmed the entire thing in, in uh, 
in Blitzmax, and uh, I think in the future I'm going to be moving to Monkey X, which is kind of a, it's another language by the same person that made Blitzmax, and it's more cross-platform because uh, uh, Platinum is very PC-oriented as far as um, you know the the design and everything. I, mean, I just don't see you really using something like that on Android or any of the other platforms, and I will. I want to do that in the future. I want to be able to go to Android if I have something that people think, well, this should be on Android, or um, I especially want to be able to do web games and do like some smaller things that just go on the web, and, and, you know, that, that aren't, I have a few ideas that aren't really, you know, not really big enough for a big standalone game, but they're something that people would still want to play in, in a smaller format, I think. So... Yeah, it's all uh, it's Max. <laughs> to answer the question. Right. And you did all the art, and I mean, did you? This is basically you did all of it by yourself, or did you have anybody helping you? Pretty much, um, I did uh, contract out for the main character that you see in the game. The original design of that, um, I hired somebody to make that, and uh, I hired another guy to make some of the tiles that you see in the game. But as far as the programming. Um, the uh, sound in the game, most of that um, comes from either uh, BFXer or SFXer, which are two great programs to make your own sounds, or uh, stuff that I found on freesound.org. Um, the music's from Incompetech, which is uh, Kevin McLeod, has some, some great stuff, and I just thought, you know, this stuff's ready to go, and I can pick exactly what I want versus, uh, you know, versus having to try and explain, you know, the music. It's kind of easier to just listen to it and say, okay, this track fits this level. So, um, but basically in the game you can go in and change the sounds. Um, so if you want the jump sound to be different or the sound when he gets hurt to be different, um, you just change those. And, uh, the same with the music. Uh, on the, the purgatory level, I kind of use a, a music that's kind of more uh, uh, ambient kind of thing. So it's not really, you know, it's not, it doesn't really sound like music. And I can envision, you could put anything in there, really. I mean, you could have voiceover in the game if you just put that in the music file. So, um, but as far as, uh, my wife helps out a little bit with the design, um, as kind of like a design consultant. And she kind of gets me uh, grounded, because I'll ask her, you know, because I'm kind of a nerd, so I'll be like, okay, what, what would a normal person think of this, you know, <laughs> as opposed to a, a computer nerd? Um, does this seem, you know, does this seem like something that, you know, um, so she can kind of answer those questions for me uh, as far as what uh, what does this look like to normal people, you know? <laughs> so. oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad to hear you married a normal... A normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's very funny. She's still she's still a gamer though. She still loves to play games and all that. So she's still yeah. a, a geek or whatever. <laughs> good, good. That's uh, I I hear that that couples that uh, game together stay together, right? Isn't that yeah, what saying? yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've been trying to do more. Uh, now they have more time. I'm trying to uh, find stuff uh, on Steam that's more you know multiplayer and and. Uh, Multiplayer simultaneous and stuff like that that we can play together. So. Yeah, very good. Yeah, that's very good, man. So let's. Uh, what What's the plan of attack for getting? I, I know you mentioned your your um your the the places we're going to be able to find it, but mm -hmm. how how do you get your name out there? What are some What are some tips that you could give give people on just getting you know getting getting your game in front of people? That's that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm still working on that myself. Um, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, just talking to everybody about it, I mean, hopefully something like this, you know, will help to kind of explain what it is a little better, um, you know, for, for uh, people that aren't really sure what kind of game it is and all that. Um, I think YouTube is real important, and I need to get more videos on there. I need to do a, a Let's Play where I can just kind of get in the game and play around with it. Um, but I think Twitter is important for uh, um, having a presence on Twitter. Um, there's a lot of great people on Twitter. Um, and also uh, Facebook. Um, I actually run a, a PC game developer group on Facebook. So 
if you come and join the group, um, you know, when you have a question about something or, or uh, whatever, uh, if I can't help you with it, somebody in there will, you know, point you in the right direction on it. Um, but as far as uh, getting the word out there, um, like I said, I'm trying to get on some other portals uh, like uh, Desura, and obviously Steam is is huge. Um, but I think uh, probably uh, looking at uh, getting more videos on YouTube so that people can see more of what the game is rather than the trailer, which the trailer is pretty much just a real short, you know, look at this real fast thing, because I think it's what people want, you know, they don't want five minutes or ten minutes to look at, they want to look at 60 seconds and see, is this cool or not, or, you know, is this even anything I'm interested in, so, um, but I think uh, just, you know, as a developer, um, talking to other developers uh, is really good, but as far as how do you, you talk to uh, people who potentially buy it, um, that's a bigger question. <laughs> you know, if I if I get that one figured out, uh, I'll be sure and let you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, some of the some of the past uh, guests I've had, they've talked about like reaching out to to uh, different YouTubers and and having them do let's plays for them and stuff. It's just kind of uh, you know just kind of utilizing utilizing that audience and and. Uh, some of that's been very successful for people, you know, doing that kind of thing, mm -hmm. reaching out and, um, yeah. Have you have you done that at all? Have you thought about reaching out to yeah people on YouTube? Yeah, I haven't haven't really talked to any of them yet. Um, I talked to you and uh, talked to another uh, have a uh, friend that uh, does press stuff, and um, I sent him an email about it. And, uh, but I haven't really hit up all the YouTubers yet, and I don't really like to just email somebody and just say, you know, I don't like to do a cut and paste email, you know, where I just say, okay, send the same, you know, I'm so into, look at my game, send it to 10,000 people. So yeah. for me, it's more about, like, I will, you know, if I'm going to email somebody, I'm going to say, okay, I'm, you know, Ian, and, and this is what what I'm doing, and if, if I know them from what they do, you know, I like to reference that in the email, so I'm not just coming, you know, from left field as another guy who's saying, please play my game, put it on the internet, but rather yeah. saying, okay, here's why I think you ought to look at this. I think your viewers would think this is cool. So, um, and, you know, I, I do. I think it's cool. So uh, I think it would be great for Let's Play stuff because you can basically make stuff in there, you know, while you're doing the Let's Play. And uh, again, <laughs> there's probably some, uh, you know, opportunity for comedy in there making silly characters and stuff like that and uh, making a, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I could see some of the YouTubers really getting a, a kick out of playing it. So, yeah, um, man. I but hope yeah, that, that's on the to-do list. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And ho I mean, and hopefully that works out for you, you know, and and it's, I think it's good to keep, to try to keep that human element into the conversation, right? Because it's online, it's so easy just to, like you said, you you write up one email and you hit send to ten thousand people or whatever it is, and yeah. you know, and it, then it's just a numbers game. Well, hopefully, you know, ten percent of this ten thousand will respond. <laughs> to, you know, and it's like, man, I think the approach of of just uh, you know really reaching out and saying, hey, this is this is who I am, and and this is the only email that's going to you. This didn't go to right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I think that helps. I think they can tell, you know, when they get the email that's the same one. That, uh, and, I mean, some of these guys are probably sitting in desks across from each other. And, you know, so the, the email's popping up on this guy's computer, and it's yeah. popping up on this lady's computer, and they're going, hey, did you just get an email about <laughs> Platfinity? And, you know, the whole office is like, yes, we all did. You know, so it doesn't really make them uh, feel special to get the, <laughs> the same email that... Uh, that you sent to everyone that you know every address you could find, um, especially the the kind of emails that come and they don't, you know, and the subject line doesn't have your name or whatever because they don't know who you are. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> sure, sure. So you mentioned uh, that a lot of books have helped you along the way. What uh, can you can you give us some names of some of those resources that you've used? Oh yeah, um, I grew up on uh, Andre Lamothe. I, I think is how you say his name. Uh, it's funny because if you don't 
meet the people in person and just see the stuff on the internet. You don't know how to pronounce anything. It's so funny. But uh, I grew up, uh, uh, when I first started doing this back in the 90s, his books were invaluable. They were just great as far as uh, learning the basics. Um, as far as starting out now, um, I recommend different things, definitely, because it's more of a programming uh, side of things. And I think depending on where where you wanted to go and and what you want to you know if you if you want to go to AAA that's like a different path than if you want to go to uh, doing an indie and indie team is different than doing it as like indie indie as like one person that's very different. So um, one book I could definitely recommend for people that are interested in industry jobs. Uh, it used to be called uh, Paid to Play, which uh, probably wasn't the best title, but um, Wrote it down here, and now it's uh, it's not got that great of a, a name now. It's just called Video Game Careers, um, but it's uh, the author's names are Alice Rush, David Hogson, and Brian Stratton, and I think that that's a really great resource to anybody that's looking to get uh, a job, an actual job job in it. Um, and again, it's called Video Game Careers. It's a paperback. Uh, the latest edition was like two thousand eight. And it really, because it, it kind of talks to people who are in the jobs that, that actually do the jobs, and it's more showing you what those people do versus, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have the conception that when you, you know, you become a game designer that, you know, you're playing games or whatever, and uh, you really don't do a whole lot of playing games unless you're in test, and then you're trying to break the game, not really play it, so. Uh, <laughs> but for... For for uh, for indies, I recommend uh, just off the top of my head to go to Pixel Prospector, pixelprospector.com, and they have a ton of great stuff that you know you'll find from the links on that page. Just depending on what you're wanting to go into, you know, it's the art side, the programming side, the production. Um, that's a great place to start for for indie people. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. That. Uh... That's good. I'll make sure to get those links and those books in the notes so that uh, that people can cool. find them. So let's talk a little bit about the path, man. What have been some uh, just some big time learning experiences for you? Things that uh, um, you know maybe they were you felt like they were a mistake or you know <laughs> something that you're like, yeah, you know, I if I could give this advice so that somebody else doesn't have to go through it, what what would something like that be? I think pretty much the biggest thing for me has been, uh, you know, making stuff more that that uh, I like and I think is cool versus uh, stuff that um, has a more wide appeal. I think, um, and also listening to the users and the feedback. I think it's really difficult for indies because you really, you know, you're attached to the project. You love the project. You to your baby or whatever. And to have somebody say, well, it doesn't have this or it doesn't have that or I don't like this, uh, it, you know, it can hurt sometimes. So, um, But I think you definitely need to listen like when people say that I want to change the controls, you know. Um, I think one of the things when I was working on, on Plethora, people said they wanted to change the controls or they wanted to play with the controller. And I thought, well, yeah, but it's perfect with mouse and keyboard. And I think I probably should have just listen to that and go ahead and put in there for you to, to use an Xbox controller if you felt like doing that because um, it wouldn't have been, you know, I, I could have figured out how to do it. Um, so with the, when I was making Plyfinity, um, I put that in there where basically you can change the keys to whatever keys you want. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a long time, uh, you know, as a, as a programmer, if you're not using an engine that has a capability, it takes a long time to manually add that to a game. But I think that your users will they'll thank you for it and they'll be appreciative of that. And uh, like now when you, you want to use a joystick on this game or a controller, you just plug it in and it says, oh, there's a controller and it senses it and you can instantly use it. So um, I think listening to, uh, listening to feedback that people give you and trying to, I mean, you don't have to do absolutely everything they tell you to do because then you're going to end up some kind of crazy chimera of a game if you just listen to every single suggestion. So, But I think you need to listen to what the people that are playing your games are saying and try to uh, try to assimilate at least part of that. 
and uh, maybe not be, you know, you need to be open to that. And I definitely see, because like I said, I, I do a PC game developer group, and uh, I'm on Facebook and some of the other groups, and you'll see those those questions where people will say, okay, give me feedback on my game, and then people do, and they're like, no, I'm not changing that, you know, no, you're wrong, you know, and so it's like, you know, I think you have to, you just have to look at, at, at uh, it doesn't matter what you really think it is, it, what matters more is what, you know, so if everyone else thinks it's it's A and you think it's B, they're right, you know, <laughs> so as, at least as far as, you know, their, their perspective on it, um, so I think definitely listening to uh, to the users um, and and being able to take feedback and not really take it personally, not really be like, okay, you know, you suck because this thing about your game, but rather, oh, okay, I can see what you're saying there, and uh, I'll keep it in mind, kind of thing. Yeah, and we live in a time where you can get that feedback. Like, what what what's the platform that you've been able to get feedback from 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 people that have that have tried this, uh, mostly Facebook and uh, from the people that I've sent it to. I have other game developer friends who I uh, send it to, and they basically get back with me on what they thought of it. And uh, you know, I have an artist friend, and he's very you know okay. This art thing should be like this, and okay. And then I have other friends that you know different disciplines, and each one of them has some feedback from their perspective. But um, I definitely would like to have more users, uh, you know, out there that are, are playing it and getting back to me. Um, I'm very open to that. If somebody buys the game, uh, my email's on there. Uh, send me an email. Tell me what you thought of it. Uh, give me some uh, some ideas. If there's something you'd like to see in the game that it doesn't do, then let me know what it is, and maybe you know it's possible I could could add it. Um, and uh, if there's something that you don't like about it, let me know that too. Because uh, you know, really, there's no way to to know what uh, what you're dealing with if people don't give you that kind of feedback. And it is kind of funny because you, you put out a game and, and you know hundreds of people look at it, and um, it can be a struggle to get people to play it and and tell you what they thought. Really, there's just so many games today. <laughs> right. So many yeah. things competing for attention. For sure, and then you have people that have no problem giving you their uh, opinion, especially if they don't like something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think that you're going to hear that probably more than the uh, <laughs> more than the part you know where they like something, because I think, and I think it's just human nature, because it's like people are compelled to you know if if something upsets them, especially they're compelled to tell you about that. But if if something's good, you know. You might hear about it, you might not. It's like the old adage where, you know, one happy customer may tell one person, but an angry customer is going to tell ten people. You know, <laughs> you're going to tell everybody. So, um, yeah. <laughs> is there a, is there been a, a, a some advice that you've been given along the way that you could pass along to us that's been you know just kind of crucial to the 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 path you've been on? Well, I, I think the best uh, the best advice I could give somebody um, that's wanting to uh, make games and put something out um, is I think when you get to the point where you want to put something out for the public and it's more than just like a, a two day game jam game or it's uh, um, you know something like a prototype or a demo. If you're really looking at putting something out that's a complete finished game there's going to be so much of that that seems kind of overwhelming as far as if you look at where you are on day one with maybe you've got a black screen and you've got one little thing moving around on that screen to where you are with the finished game. I think if you think about it in terms of the finished game, it seems like this huge big thing. And so I like to look at it as an analogy of, of a house. And I'm not sure where I got this, but um, if you think about building a house, you don't just go out to the building site and build a house the first day. You, you, every day you do something, you know, first you lay the foundation and the flooring and then the, the walls. So I like to think of it as every day you're laying a brick. And every day that you work on your game is like a brick. So if you, uh, each day you don't think about making the whole game, you know, especially something that's going to take you a year or more. You don't think, okay, I'm going to make this whole game. You think, okay, today I'm going to lay a brick. I'm going to do one thing, whether that's, you know, okay, 
today I'm going to put in and test the joystick. Uh, that could be that day's brick, or um, even you know any of the things that uh, you know. Today I'm going to work on this particular piece of art that goes in the game. Because I think if you think about it as in terms of like having a whole finished game or a, a big house or a skyscraper, it's just overwhelming. But if you think about it, just every day I lay one brick, and before you know it, you have a house or, in this case, a game. So I'm not sure where I got that, but I'm sure I got it from someone else. It's not, it's not something I came up with, but, uh, you know, that, that's how I like to look at it. And that, that kept me, uh, that always kept me working on it day after day. When it seems like you're not really making that much progress. Yeah, man. I mean, that's great advice to just to just get a little bit done every day, and you see progress. I mean, I know on projects I've worked on, you know, on other websites and things like that. Like, if I tried to squeeze everything I wanted to do for the week into like Saturday, it never felt as productive. And I always felt like even that was I'm going to be here at this computer for so long. Yeah. But if you could get up, I actually, I've, I've, I've actually dabbled in writing a few books myself and uh, getting up and writing each morning mm -hmm. even if it's just a you know 500 words or a thousand words all of a sudden I've got like I think I've started two or three books one of them's at like mm -hmm. 4,000 words one of them's at like either 12 or 15,000 words you know and all that was is a is a is me just working day after day yeah. Just, yeah. there and it feels like I mean it makes you feel like you've and I would do it first thing in the morning, and you feel like you've completed something. You feel like you're mm -hmm. making progress on the thing that you're right. that you want to put the time into, and it's it's absolutely great advice. Yeah, I, I think all the all the great you know I've, I've heard several of the great writers say that they get up first thing in the morning and write you know a page, and then okay, at least I did a page today. Mm -hmm. You know and. Because otherwise, you know, you can feel you can feel bad about it. You can look at how much is more to do, and, and you know, you feel bad about it. Versus if you did something, you know, and you check something off, or you just put time into it, you know, it's like if you four thousand pages, it's impressive. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, and I'd written four thousand words, just so we're clear, not pages. Oh, words, not pages. Okay, I was pages, just say, man, I, I would, think I heard you wrong. <laughs> I, better, I better be trying to get something published if I've got. Yeah, books. it's good. It's, it's not a couple of. It's about ten books, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I heard you wrong there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's good stuff. So let me ask you. Let me ask you, man. If eighteen-year-old uh, Ian walked up and said, "Hey, I want to get into the gaming industry," what do you tell yeah. him? Um, well, if it, if it was me, I'd say uh, you need to get out to Silicon Valley right now. <laughs> but of course, that was uh, that would be uh, I was 18, 1988, so um, things are a little different now. And I think I think that's actually good um, because if you think about it, things are so much less centralized as far as uh, I have friends in game development in uh, in the UK, in uh, Russia, in Germany. And uh, I'm on the voice acting. I'm working with people down in uh, uh, like Buenos Aires, you know, around there. And uh, so I don't think that there's really the borders where it used to be. Okay, you want to do game development? Go out where they're, you know, they're doing it in Texas or they're doing it in California. And that's when I moved to California in, in the early 2000s um, because that's where it all was in my mind. And uh, I think nowadays it's not just there; it's it's everywhere. And basically, you don't really need. You know, I mean, we could talk like this, and it's like we're in the same room. So you know, you're able to collaborate with people around the world. Um, you know, anywhere. So, but I think um, I think the 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 biggest advice I would give a young person is to really figure out which discipline you want to go into. Because if you want to go into programming, that's a different path than going into art. And if you want to go into production, that's a different path. And really figure out which type, what, what do you really think that you're good at and what do you enjoy as far as making video games? And you have to answer that question first. Um, but I think regardless of whether you're going to go into AAA, you're going to go into indie, you have to think about, okay, what do I need to do to get there, and I think it doesn't matter what discipline you're going into, you need to make games and you need to finish stuff. 
because I think you know if you're if you're gonna show a potential um, employer your work, you need to be able to show them that you can not only start a game and make a prototype, but you can follow through, and it doesn't have to be you know you can make a shuffleboard or something, but you know it needs to have that menu that comes up, and you have to be able to quit out of the program. You have to be you know you have to have a a complete standalone thing that works and functions and 100% feature complete. And I think if you do that, that is a lot more impressive than than people who, you know, have three prototypes that kind of are, are you know, pretty much broken or just tech demos. So and I think that last little bit, that last 10% of making a game takes about 90% of the time and effort. And it's that finishing that if I was going to hire somebody uh, to work with or decide to work with somebody on an indie team, I would want somebody that finished projects. And I think if you're looking at getting into AAA, they want to see a portfolio from an artist and from a programmer. They want to see, hey, have you made any games already? You know, and can you show me what you've already made? Because they don't expect you to, um, you know make Skyrim because that's hundreds of people yeah. but you know if you can make uh, you know if you can can do Pong and you can remake Pong well then they know that you can program a little bit you know so um, but I think the, the advice really depends on uh, for young people it depends on whether you want to go into programming art production sound design where you want to go because um, I think they're different as far as whether you need college for that or what kind of college or, or what kind of schooling. Um, you know, I, I do wish that uh, as far as, as me, um, with me being self-taught, I mean, that doesn't really help me to go out and get a job somewhere over somebody that has a computer science degree and also can program. So, um, you know, I think it, depending on where your life is and if you can afford to do it, then there's no reason not to, really. So, but it really just depends on what your goals are, um, you know, and uh, what you want to get out of it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, what's the best way that uh, that we could connect with you? Um, probably just uh, the, the Platfinity website, platfinity.com. Um, also, all my old work is on uh, retrolutionary.com which is kind of my company name. Uh, it's not really much of a company. It's just uh, <laughs> the forward-facing part of me. Uh, so it's retrolutionary, like like revolutionary, but with a T, retrolutionary.com. Okay. And that's kind of got all the stuff that I've done, little synopsis of all of it on there. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, like I said, I run the PC Game Developers Group on Facebook. So if you want to connect with me there, um, you look me up on Facebook. It's uh, I think it's Ian Martin, two seven three is probably my uh, name on there. Um, or if you just search Ian Martin, uh, West Virginia. I live in a town called Bowden. I'm sure it'll come up. But uh, uh, also I'm on Twitter. So uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Ian Martin two seven three. Um, and Platfinity is on. Uh, Itch.io right now. It's actually on uh, Halloween sale today, and uh, <laughs> it's on Steam Greenlight. I'm not really sure how you do a Steam Greenlight because the URL is like HTTP uh, SteamCommunity.com slash shared file slash file detail slash ID, and then it's <laughs> 326-903-625. Okay, it doesn't just say Platfinity. It says Three two six nine zero three six two five. So uh, that's I guess if you typed in all that, or you could just go on Greenlight and and then search for Platfinity, uh, and you find it on there. But uh, yeah, probably right. uh, Facebook, Twitter, my website. That's how you can you know. And I'm just like a normal person or whatever. So you know, you can just email me, and uh, I'll be glad to you know answer any questions you've got. <laughs> For sure. Hey, is your website done in WordPress? Um, it was initially, but then I didn't. Uh, the the I think the one the retrolutionary one is done with that Weebly uh, editing thing because uh, they downgraded my account there, and I just had one page, so I just used the Weebly 
drag and drop, and the Platfinity page I built in SeaMonkey. With okay. uh, and I'm doing the FTP up to, uh, but I think if you look in the directory, like the the WordPress stuff is still on there, because I never figured out how to get it all out of the out of the, the root directory or whatever. But the the site is basically built with the uh, just built with SeaMonkey, and uh, uploaded to FTP with uh, FileZilla. So, okay, well, if this is a this is a tip for anybody that that is using. Uh, WordPress. There is a plugin for WordPress called Pretty Link, and you can you can literally turn any link you want into what you want it to be. And here's what here's what I mean. This show, as an example, when I put this show up on the on the website, it'll be um, n64gaming.com/slash um, n64-gaming-podcast-hyphen episode hyphen 18 right it's a really long uh, name right, so with, yeah. with pretty link I copy that URL and I put it into pretty link and it says what do you want the URL to be and it's it's n64gaming.com slash actually I'm sorry this is episode like 25 or 26 I believe so um, forgive me for that I'm just releasing 18 tomorrow but uh, so this is 26 so uh, n64gaming.com slash 26 will take them to that long URL. Um, another thing, and if you're not using WordPress, there's still another way we can you can you could do it. You can go into uh, Bitly, right? I'm sure you've heard of Bitly. Or it's mm -hmm. bit.ly, and yeah, okay. and then you can create a custom link. So you could probably create um, Bitly. I, I think it's Bitly.com. I'd have to check it for sure, but. Um, and you could you you could put uh, Platfinity at the end of it, so you could take that long URL and create mm -hmm. a little custom URL for it, so that uh, you know you could easily tweet that out or uh, things like that. So something so, better than that that giant Steam link that's <laughs> yeah that's huge man. So and yeah. there's lots of other there's a plenty of URL shorteners out there, but some of them allow you to actually customize what it says so that you could tell somebody it's bit.ly slash uh, Platfinity, right? Uh -huh. that, that kind of thing. And the other great thing about that is you can see how many people have clicked that link. That's also very helpful. It, it tracks for you that way. So, cool. um, so yeah, anyway. Anyway, that's uh, if WordPress, it's pretty link. And if you don't have WordPress, Bitly is one of them. But if you Google URL shortener, you'll be able to find something that will, uh, that will, that will fit your needs for sure. Make it a little, little bit, uh, whatever it is, 326-903-625. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna type that in. I know it. <laughs> Just search the game name <laughs> for sure. But we'll uh, we'll definitely get all the links in the show notes. And uh, like I said, man, I do appreciate you taking the time. I wish you the very best with the launch of this game. I hope uh, I hope it does great for you. And uh, yeah, I would. Uh, um, it, it, will it run on a Mac, or is it only going to run on PC? Um, so far, it's only PC. Um, I don't actually have a Mac, so uh, you kind of have to have one in order to compile anything for yeah, it. Yeah. So, it, you know, if I get a Mac down the road, um, I think the code might be somewhat portable. Um, there's only a couple uh, Windows-specific things in there. Like when you when you start it up, it does a system call to figure out what your resolution is, and it automatically sets the resolution. So you don't have to uh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go in there and click what resolution you want. It just automatically does it. So, um, but there's a few uh, just a few things in like that, and then the rest would just be the file access stuff. If the file access stuff uh, would be similar on a Mac as far as saving and loading things, because um, basically if you you know you go in the game and and you draw something, it grabs that and it saves that out as as a ping file. And then when it loads it back in, everything's stored in, in uh, ping files, PNG files. So as long as all that would work on the Mac, I mean, there's a potential that, that it can be ported. Okay. Cool, man. Hey, the only reason I ask is I'm only I'm running Mac. I don't have a way to, to, to oh, okay. play PC. <laughs> okay. That's why yeah. I bring it up. So, but, uh, one, uh, yeah, anyway, I do really appreciate you coming on. And like I said, I wish you the best of luck. And, uh you know, let's, sure, let's stay in you, touch. Man. Let's hear progress right. report in a couple months, and uh, maybe okay. we'll chat again. 
Well, I, I put it. I put in the IGF and uh, that stuff. They, the IGF told me it would be going live next week uh, for the public-facing page of that. And then um, I will hear about that. I think January sixth, they'll announce uh, the finalists are in that. So, um, you know, maybe uh, somebody in there sees it and, and thinks it's as innovative and cool as I do. Then, uh, you know, that's a possibility. And then, of course, I'll go to GDC if that happens. It would be great to to get back there. <laughs> I've been there since uh, I think two thousand three. So, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's great talking with you and. Uh, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. We'll uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Don't go anywhere just yet. We are okay. Done with the show. Come on, stop. <laughs> it still says